Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, AKG Lauren 33. I'm back with another video on the channel for you guys today. And today, you guys already see the title. And I know the first thing everyone's going to say is, Fitz, you're like over two weeks late, right? What took you so long to, you know, finally make a video on this? And a couple things, a couple things. First off, when the news came out about Akira Toriyama back on March 7th, right? Um, you know, he officially passed away on March 1st, but the news wasn't made public till almost a week later. Um, on March 7th, I was actually traveling. I was, if you guys follow me on social media, uh, I was literally traveling to Orlando because I was going on a cruise. I was on vacation. And I got back uh, last Monday. I'm recording this on a Sunday. So it's been six days since I officially got back. And I'm finally getting around to doing this now. And originally, I'll give you guys basically the timeline. On March 7th, um, I was literally, I got off a plane in Orlando because uh, our cruise wasn't was, was supposed to start till like the next day. And literally, I would say about 20 to 30 minutes after I got off the plane, right? We had just got it in our bags. You know, we're, gonna, we're, about, we're getting ready to like call an Uber so we can get head to our hotel. And that's when I saw the, the Twitter news. All the tweets started coming out at once. You know, Herms98 on Twitter, the Dragon Ball official uh, Twitter page, right? All the content creators. And I'm like, wait, what the what the fuck is happening here? You know? And then I look and it was like, Akira Toriyama has passed away. And at first, I would say this. First, I was in complete shock and disbelief. And then, then this rust of sadness came over to me, right? And I'll be honest, like, of course, you know, people die and people are born every single day. It's the cycle, right? You're born, you live, you know, X amount of time, and then eventually you die. You return back uh, to the ground where we, uh, where we come from, right? And, of course, celebrities die every single day. When the news first came and the shockness hit me, and then, then I started seeing all the tweets coming out, right? All the voice actors, all the celebrities, everyone, you know, coming over because it was such a jarring, you know, out of nowhere thing. It was like, wow. And I, I'm going to be honest. I, I tried thinking about it. I don't think I felt this way about somebody passing, like a celebrity passing, somebody that wasn't like in my immediate family or anything like that. I hadn't felt this way about somebody passing since the death of Kobe Bryant, which was about, four, you know, four years ago, back in 2020, literally, you know, right before COVID um, came and took over the world, right? And literally, like, I was in disbelief because this is a guy who I've never met personally, right? You know, and there's not even a lot of footage of the guy out there, but this is a guy who has been impacted my life so positively for so many years right and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about myself so, uh my first introduction to akira toriyama's work dragon ball came back i want to say mid 2000s right my first uh exposure to it wasn't the beginning of dragon ball z it was actually near the end they back then uh they used to put the the boo saga of dragon ball z on Cartoon Network, right? And of course, I, you know, as a little kid, you know, I loved Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney Channel. Those three channels were always right next to each other. I could spend all day just sitting there watching cartoons, right? My parents always yelling at me, like, get away from the TV. It's going to rot your brain, you know? But my that was my first exposure to it, right, was the Boo Saga. Goku meeting Goten for the first time. I think that was the first, like, true episode of DBZ I watched. And then... Going through and then seeing, you know, Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 3 when Goku first showcased the form against Majin Buu. And then, you know, me thinking it was so cool seeing this random guy just sit there screaming. But then all of a sudden, you know, his hair would turn all blonde. It would get longer and he would look like a total badass. I was like, who is this Goku guy? Like, what is this Super Saiyan, you know, thing? And then... um. My next exposure came to it is I got a GameCube for all us OG video gamers, right? Before there was, you know, PS5s and Xbox uh, Series X and all that. 
you know, GameCube. That was my first video game console. That and then, like, the Sony Vegas. My dad back then had a PlayStation 1. If any of you guys go on Google Images and look what those look like. Right? But, um, yeah, so... But I got a GameCube, and then my first, you know, Dragon Ball game I ever played was DBZ Budokai 2. It wasn't Budokai 3, it wasn't Infinite World, it wasn't Budokai Tekaichi yet. My first Dragon Ball game ever was Budokai 2, right? And if you go search up, the, the intro is iconic to me. I love the intro so much. It goes like... Right, sorry, I'm singing it for you, but uh, that intro is so iconic. Like, literally, it goes through like all of the DBZ villains, right? Goku um, and Vegeta fighting in their Super Saiyan forms and fusing the Vegito, right? Um, and like the end of the intro is like all the Z fighters, but then Goku's in the front and he's about to make a wish to Shenron. And, you know, I, I love that game. And then that just grew my love for Dragon Ball. Because then growing up, right, um, I didn't get to watch DBZ, like, on the tapes. Remember, back then, you know, um, if you wanted to watch uh, all of Dragon Ball Z, there wasn't streaming sites yet. There was no Crunchyroll or Funimation or anything like that. You know, um, back then you want to watch DBZ, the best way to get it was to either get the Blu-ray or to get it through the tapes, right? VHS system, which nobody does, has any of those anymore, right? Um, but yeah, that's how you had to get it. And um, I didn't have the money to go buy all nine seasons of DBZ on tape. So what I would do is I would literally spend on the weekends away from school. I would literally spend hours and hours, literally, like and my parents would yell at me all the time because I spent so much time as a kid in front of TVs and computer screens, right? You know, absolutely like my eyeballs just looking at the screen all day. I, I would spend hours watching uh, DBZ clips on YouTube, right? And like, you know, 480p quality and all that. Um, and like, I, you know, I would do that for like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, right? And literally, that's how I, my, that was my first way of watching the DBZ story. Just watching it through like different clips. Some of them were like four minutes, some of them were 10 minutes, right? Uh, and then, you know, uh, I would go on Google and search up different things about like the timeline to make the story make sense, you know? And then... Events and that's how I, I literally watched the entire uh the entire DBZ story uh, for the first time through YouTube clips, and then um around 2008 right uh Nicktoons right I told you guys how much I loved watching Nickelodeon and those channels back then Nicktoons um got the rights for DBZ Kai right which we all know I always tell people if you want to watch you know Dragon Ball Z if you want to uh relive the dbz story with the manga accurate english dub and then you want to watch it uh fast with no filler right get through it fast watch dbz kai you know um if you want to watch you know the older dub with you know some of the lines don't aren't as accurate to the manga as kai is right you know with filler then go watch dbz um but then DBZ Kai was on Nicktoons. I remember, eight, you know, on weekdays, every single night, eight o'clock, you would get DBZ Kai. And then at nine o'clock, you know, depending on the night, you would get one or two episodes of DBZ Kai. And then at nine o'clock, you would get uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Of course, Avatar's in the news a lot these days now because they got the new movie coming out. They have the Netflix live action show, which has been a huge success. But yeah. So then uh, I watched DBZ Kai, right? And I was like, this is awesome. The, you know, the, the, getting to see it with the updated quality and, you know, the more accurate uh, script and everything. I was like, this is awesome. And then my love for DBZ just grew and grew and grew, right? Then entering into, you know, the two, 2010s, you know, I started growing up, um, you know, entering into teenage year, high school year. It was right around 2014. So I think like August of this year will mark like me being on YouTube for 10 years, which is crazy to think about. I started my YouTube channel back in high school. 
And then, of course, if you're if you've been subscribed to my channel for any amount of time, right? Uh, we mainly cover Dragon Ball and wrestling on here, right? Those are the main two things we cover. Um, and yeah, we you know from there we entered into Dragon Ball Super, right? And that Dragon Ball Super meant so much to me is because you know, like I said, I was born in nine in the uh, at the end of the nineties, right? I wasn't born in the late 80s or the early 90s when Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z were on TV, you know. Uh, so with Dragon Ball Super coming along when I was in high school, it felt like I get to, I got to experience what all these older content creators got to experience when they were little, right? Getting to have new episodes of Dragon Ball new every single week, something new to talk about, right? No matter if it was like, you know, the term of the power or the Goku Black arc, right? No matter if it was good or bad, no matter how you I, I felt about certain episodes, it was just the fact that we got new episodes every single week. And, you know, my love for Dragon Ball, you know, I was going to watch no matter what was going on, no matter if it was a crazy death battle with Goku and Jiren, or if it was just a filler episode where Goku and Vegeta and the others are playing freaking baseball, you know? And then, of course... You know, we all know Dragon Ball Super ended. The anime ended actually six years ago, uh, right around today, depending on when you guys are watching this video. Um, it's already been six years since the anime originally ended. Of course, the manga is still going. Um, but yeah, and you know, that that's, that's, a, that's a little recap of my Dragon Ball history, my love for this franchise, right? And, I, you know, I, t I, I tell you guys that because... For any of you guys who know me, like outside of YouTube or anything like that, Dragon Ball means a lot to me. It does, you know. Um, of course, I know, you know, that I, I'm a Christian, personally. I, you know, I believe that, you know, I believe in Christ. And I believe, and I don't talk about that much here. But I believe that, you know, one day, you know, Christ will come back to save, uh, save all of us. And then, so, you know, something like Dragon Ball you know, won't go to heaven with you, right? Maybe the memories, but, like, you know, uh, it's not like you're going to be in heaven watching Dragon Ball or anything like that. You know, it's it's a material item. At the end of the day, it's just a piece of art, right? It's a it's a work. It's a, you know, it's a, uh, it's a fictional work. You know, of course, it's not real or anything like that, but the love and the joy and the entertainment it has brought me throughout not only my childhood, but now into my adult life, Right, is something I can never say thank you enough to Akira Toriyama for. Because at the end of the day, it's his creation, right? And you know, the and when I look at it, you know, we all, if you're a true Dragon Ball fan, no matter what age, you right, you we all tried turning Super Saiyan, believing somehow, some way, we had Saiyan cells in it. And if you screamed, you know, loud enough, or if you like, you know, tried to push your veins or whatever push your body as hard as you could, you could become a Super Saiyan like Goku, right? If you did enough push-ups or sit-ups, you know, you could train your body and you could be, you know, strong enough to face anything, any challenge in life, right? Um, And those things, you know, yelling Kamamaha or, you know, Special Beam Cannon or Final Flash, things like that, you know, those are memories that I will never forget. I will never forget, you know, all the time my mom would yell me like, George, stop yelling, right? No matter what you're seeing on screen, that's not real. But still, those moments meant so much to me because they brought me so much happiness, right? And I just want to say thank you to Akira Toriyama for that. If you know me, like, uh, I remember when we got the news about Toriyama's passing, um, a lot of my friends who I went on vacation with, they're Dragon Ball fans too, Right, but easily, I'm the biggest Dragon Ball fan of the bunch by far. You know, I, I want to call my friends casual fans, but they're not like super diehard, diehard like I am, right? And if you if you if you see me, right, I have tons of Dragon Ball shirts. You know, most of my most of my casual T-shirts are wrestling and Dragon Ball shirts. I have tons of Dragon Ball shirts and hoodies. I'm in the closet. You know, if you ever see my room, there's Dragon Ball posters all over the place and figures. Um, this, look at my, my freaking case right there. You know, my, my case is a Vegeta case, right? So, you see, Dragon Ball's had a, a huge influence on my life and who I am as a person, 
right? You know, um, I think a lot of my personality comes from Dragon Ball, if I'm being honest with you. You know, I, I consider myself kind of like Goku. Every day, you know, I wake up, it's a new chance to be better. It's a new chance to become stronger. It's a new chance to become a better version of the person I was yesterday. That's who Goku is, right? No matter who Goku faces, no matter when he wins or when he loses or, you know, uh, no matter how strong he becomes, he always wants to become stronger because he always believes that they're, you know, he wants to become a better version of himself. He wants to challenge himself and he always knows that there's a new challenge out there for him to face. No matter if he knows it or not. He always knows there's somebody else stronger than him out there. No matter if they're a good person or a bad person. And that excites him. Because he wants to get stronger to face that challenge one day. And you know, I tie that to myself a lot. No matter what's going on in my work life or my personal life or, you know, my family or anything like that. You know, I I believe that, you know, what happens in our life when we face those challenges and we overcome them, you know, it makes us better. Right, And we should be trying to improve no matter what's going on in our lives every single day. We should always be trying to become a better version of ourselves. You know, and that's one of the lessons, you know, that Dragon Ball has taught me. And when I think of it, you know, Akira Toriyama, I don't know, you know, because look, based on what everything you hear about Akira Toriyama, um, he was a private guy, right? It's funny how all this footage of him does didn't come out until uh his passing, right? And um it's sad also because Toriyama was only sixty eight years old. I I don't know about you guys, I don't consider sixty eight that old, right? Of course that's a little bit of course for most people sixty eight is later in life, right? Um and it's a blessing. Every day we have, every day that we are alive is a blessing. But um, 68, I don't think that's old. You know, when you consider it, uh, you know, some people may not like this comment. I think that, you know, people um, in the Japanese culture tend to live a little bit healthier than uh, we do here in the uh, American culture, right, for whatever reason. Um, you see someone like Masako Nozawa, who, you know, the Japanese voice of Goku and how long she's been doing that. She's been voicing that character for over four decades. And she's, what, I believe in her mid-80s now, if I'm correct? And you see she's in fantastic shape, right? She looks super healthy, right? And, you know, you see a lot of actually, like, Japanese voice actors, you know, even in their older years of life, they look in fantastic shape, right? I don't consider 68 that old for any culture. You know, and what's sad is, you know, uh, the reason, you know, he died of acute brain, uh, I forget what it was. it was, basically he had a blood clot in his brain, and he had a brain uh, tumor that was revealed a couple months before, and he was hoping, or planning to have surgery to have it removed, and then, unfortunately, he passed before that, he could even have the surgery, but, um, it, what's, one of the things that's so sad is it wasn't like Toriyama was in a later stage of his life, right? It wasn't like, you know, he was in his 80s and he was more retired and just, you know, um, you know, not, you know, no longer creating, just living like, you know, his last days. This was a guy that was still working, you know, he, he, he had been working on Dragon Ball Daima and, you know, it, it, it said, um, it was stated that he had several other works that he was working on. You know, other dragon, probably other Dragon Ball stories, no matter if it was, you know, a different anime or if it was, you know, other stories for the Dragon Ball Super manga, which it was, you know, which is still going right now. Or if it was a different project, we know he worked on other great works like Sandland and Dr. Slump and etc. But it was he, the guy was still working. You know, he still had so he had he had accomplished so much in the last four decades. Right. More than most people will ever uh achieve in a lifetime but he was still working he you know it wasn't like he was anywhere near ready to fully retire he was still creating awesome stories um but then god said said you know this it's it's time it's time my child come home you know and uh i just don't know if toriyama ever really was able to grasp or even understand just understand even a little bit the the true impact he made on society like for real 
You know, Dragon Ball wasn't just famous in Japan. Dragon Ball had become so global. When you look at pop culture in general, right? Even if you've never watched a single episode of Dragon Ball, you know, you probably knew what Dragon Ball was when whenever someone said it, right? You you think, oh, Dra- is that is that the is that that goofy show where people yell and then uh, you know they just transform into a different color, right? Or you know they scream like these you know these these weird words, kamamaha, or is that the show um with the Dragon Balls or whatever, right? That with the orbs that you can make magical wishes if you collect all seven. You know, I think if you ask most people, you know, they knew what Dragon Ball was, whether they were, they were a fan or not. Dragon Ball had grown into this global icon, you know, and it was just really a show about fighting at the end of the day. You know, Dragon Ball has lessons in it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's an action adventure. But it had grown into this thing that it impacted so many people across the world, outside of Japan. And... Seeing how Dragon Ball has been referenced, all these other anime that reference Dragon Ball, right? That have Easter eggs, you know. I remember watching like a freaking uh, Dr. Stone episode not too long ago where freaking, you know, Dr. Stone is talking about pop culture and then Goku and Vegeta, you know, uh, a seed from their battles is literally in their anime. And I'm like, holy moly, right? You see all these other manga artists that had taken interest from Toriyama's works and brought into their own. It, it, it you know, uh, there's so many, there's so many, so many, there's thousands of different examples you can use of Dragon Ball's um, presence in pop culture, right? And I really don't know if Toriyama actually ever truly understood the impact, you know, his work had created. I, I really don't know. Um, and so, so it's sad to think about it because he was still creating. That's that's what I think. That's really what makes it. I I don't want to get emotional about it. I think that's really the saddest part for me when I think about it. It's just, if you know, it's it was it's sad regardless. You know, you know, it's sad that he was young. You know, he wasn't young, young, but he was still young. You know, he was sixty eight. It's not old. You know, personally, I don't consider old until you get into like your mid to late seventies. That's when you know start getting really up there in years. But I didn't consider him old. Um, I think the saddest part is he was just still creating. If he was like I said earlier, if he was you know more retired, maybe. But this was a guy that you know that was still you know was still enjoying what he was doing and still had many years of creation ahead of him. And now that's you know now that's no longer the case. Right, and Dragon Ball is something that's gonna be around forever, you know, for a long, long time. Dragon Ball is not going away. Of course, they, they, the, you know, they're gonna have to figure out what they want to do with the future of the franchise. Of course, Dragon Ball Daima is now gonna be that much more impactful when it comes out this fall because it's gonna be about um, it's gonna be really the last true work. That tor- the last two Dragon Ball work Toriyama, you know, created before his passing. Um, so that's going to be an emotional story. Um, but of course, right, I think most likely Toritaro will fully take over the manga, right? We knew that Toriyama was still kind of writing the basic story. And then it was Toritaro's job to fill in the gaps between the story points. But it was Toriyama's story and then Toritaro was doing the, you know, filling in the gaps along with the art. But I feel like now in terms of at least the DBS manga, you know, whatever comes out next will be, you know, will now be fully Toritaro. And Toritaro will just be continuing Toriyama's legacy, right? Um, And I also felt like that that was probably going to happen eventually one day anyway. But now it's like, all right, Tartaro, now it's up to you fully. The story the story is yours. You know? Um it's up to you to continue this legacy, this world that Toriyama's created, you know, that impacted so many lives over the last four decades. Right. Same thing with Ayoku, uh Akil Yoku, head of the the Dragon Ball room, head of the Capsule Corp uh, company, right? 
Yoku has stated that, you know, he has plans for Dragon Ball anime and games and movies over the next decade. Because he does understand that Dragon Ball now has this global reach, you know. While Toriyama, Toriyama was comfortable sitting in private, not doing interviews and things like that. Just creating and then allowing everybody else to do all the other work, right? Do the animation and all that. I'll sit back and create the story that you guys love, but you guys will do everything else. And I think Oyoku, you know, even if Toriyama didn't, may have not understood how global Dragon Ball had become, right? I think Oyoku had, you know, especially seeing Oyoku come to, like, New York Comic Con and all these, uh, you know, other events. I think Oyoku, um, I think Oyoku, you know, now he'll be working much more closer with Toritaro about different story ideas and things they want to do with the story going forward, Right? You know, because now anything you push out will not just be, you know, a new era of Dragon Ball, but it will be, you know, uh, continuing on the legacy that Toriyama built for 40 years. Right. And I think also as fans, we got to understand that, you know, the amount of the pressure that these two are going to be under as like the leaders of the new era of Dragon Ball going forward, you know, they're going to have a lot of pressure on them, you know. And they may, you know, my hope would be that I trust them with the story, and I do, but I also understand that they're going to be put in such a difficult position continuing what Toriyama started, and they deserve grace. They deserve grace and patience because, no, you know, no matter how good Dragon Ball is going forward or no matter what happens, none of them, nobody is going to be big enough to fill the shoes that uh, Toriyama left here on earth with dragon ball nobody will doesn't matter how good a story they come up with you know so i feel like as fans we need to be patient and you know understand that no matter what they do with the future of dragon ball right we gotta come with it with love and grace because at the end of the day we just want a good story we just want dragon ball to be good because that's what that's what Toriyama created. He created something that's so iconic that resonates with all of us. That we just wanted to be good, and that these people in charge are going to do their best. You know, they give us. You know, they continue to give us a franchise that we'll love and adore for years and years and years, as long as we may live. You know, so I really just want to say thank you to Akira Toriyama. Like, you know, I I I never met the guy. You know, um. And, you know, my biggest thing would be that I hope that no matter what you believe in in the afterlife, no matter if you're a Christian or a different, have a different, you know, a different religious system or belief system or whatever, you know, I hope that uh, whatever it is, um, even after your body, you know, decomposes and whatever, your soul remains, right? Um. I my my hope is that Toriyama in the afterlife, you know, gets to enjoy a life that he created with his own afterlife, right? You speak about Goku, you know, in the afterlife running on Snake Way or meeting King Kai or having this all this joy and happiness post dying in Dragon Ball when he died. I hope that Toriyama and his soul gets to enjoy the afterlife the same way um Goku did in the world that Toriyama created. You know, if that makes sense. Um, I'm still going to, you know, I'm still going to love Dragon Ball no matter what they do going forward. You know, there may be things I dislike and don't like, but um, the love and the joy and the entertainment that, you know, Toriyama has brought into my life through Dragon Ball, I just, I just want to say thank you. And no matter what happens going forward, that's never going to be taken away. Dragon Ball is my favorite show ever. I'm, not, I'm talking about, like, not just anime. I'm just talking about shows in general, right? Cartoons, sitcoms, movie. Dragon Ball will, will and always always has been and always will be my favorite show ever. And that's because of Kiri Toriyama. You know, he created Goku and Vegeta and all these guys that I have such a passion for, even though they're just fictional characters. Um, I, You know, I think, I just want to say thank you to Akira Toriyama one more time, you know, for the world and for your impact on society. May you never forget, be forgotten, and may your soul rest in peace. All right. So let me know in the comment section 
what's your favorite uh what's your favorite thing about a curatory album what you know what will you miss about the guy um what did he create that resonate with you the most all right but um yeah thank you guys as always for your love and support thank you guys for taking the time to listen to my thoughts i know this is a long video but i wanted to just sit down and just talk about it you know um but yeah um other than that that's about all i got for you guys today i will see you guys later like comment subscribe if you guys are new to the channel hit the bell because my name fits my tv so you guys are notified every time i post a new video follow me down on social media links are down below i will see you guys later stay safe and healthy y'all peace